In this segment, we will be talking about page tables. Page tables are fundamental to the operation of virtual memory. Uh, simply put, they're a data structure to help the operating system manage its virtual memory, right? And so there are lots of different optimizations and lots of different uh, data structures you can use. Uh, we'll look at specific types of trees and uh, hash tables and see what the benefits of each one is. We'll also look at how hardware deals with them and what is it that makes them hard to design. So the general idea behind page tables is to avoid fragmentation, right? So it, instead of segments which essentially ask the application for how much space it wanted for each segment, for example, a stack may want four kilobytes, while a heap may want 20 gigabytes and then vend out the exact uh, requirement in a continuous chunk. So if a heap wanted 20 gigabytes, you had to find a 20 gigabyte hole in your physical memory in order to vend it out. Instead of doing that, what page tables do is fundamentally take your memory space and then divide it up into equal sized chunks. So every chunk is of the exact same size. And these chunks are called pages. Okay. A page in general is just a unit of memory that's translated by the virtual memory subsystem. Right? And this is what I, the memory management unit is really a terminology used for the combination of hardware and software. Okay. Traditionally it's been four or eight kilobytes. Uh, we'll see what large versus small pages introduce. If you have large pages and this is the minimum granularity of chunk size that you're going to bend out. If you don't really use all eight kilobytes of space, for example, an application just needed two kilobytes, then you have internal fragmentation. Six kilobytes are wasted. So I bend out this chunk of memory and you only use the, the dark fraction. Right? If that happens, then you, you have internal fragmentation. This will happen if you vend out large chunks. On the other hand, if you vend out small chunks, then you would have to vend out many chunks in order to manage the whole system. So for example, if you have eight gigs of space and you vend out eight kilobytes as opposed to four kilobytes, then you need to track two, two times more entries than with the smaller page size. And so there are lots of trade-offs as to how these things uh, are organized and we'll go through this in a second. Uh, in general, it just uses a level of indirection to map program addresses similar to segmentation into physical memory addresses. Except that now, because all your chunk sizes are constant, you don't really need, you only need to store the base. You don't need a bounds. All bounds are the same. So it, compared to segmentation, which also needed a base, you needed a base and bounds, uh, paging essentially use only a, uses only a base. You can think of it as a base. You translate every four kilobyte or every page size chunk in your virtual memory subsystem into a fixed size chunk in your physical memory subsystem. This mapping between the virtual page number to the physical page number, all right? You have some number of mappings for every um, application, all right? This mapping needs to be stored somewhere. So, the overall table or collection of mappings is what is called as a page table. And every process has a page table. So every process in your system has a page table, All right? Uh, okay. So let's look at how this whole thing is gonna work with paging. So your CPU still issues virtual addresses, these go through your translation, and we'll go through what the TLB is a, a little later, but essentially goes to the memory management unit that translates the, into the physical address, and if you have an untranslated read or write, then it goes directly, okay? So the address space of a process is all the address and the state that a process can touch. Processes and kernels have different address spaces, and this is how the kernel protects itself from being touched by the application. You have two views of the memory. CPU is what the program sees, virtual memory. 
the DRAM is the actual physical memory. This is all similar segmentation. And this, this box of translation essentially now translates constant um, size chunks from virtual addresses to physical addresses. Okay. And translation essentially helps implement portability. Programs can be linked separately and relocate them. And also it ensures protection. All of this is very similar to segmentation. The only difference being that now we're going to do it in constant size chunks as opposed to variable size chunks. Right. So let's take a look at processes and virtual memory. Uh, I mean, look at the specifics of how paging works. Some of these uh, techniques may overlap with segmentation, uh, so you'll notice the relation as we're going along. So the general idea is to allow multiple processes to simultaneously occupy memory. Uh, it provides protection and ensures that processes cannot read or write memory from each other. Okay. If you want to read or write, then you got to share. Okay. We'll look at how sharing is implemented. Uh, the address space is essentially give each program the illusion of its own private memory. Um, and so the idea is to ensure that each uh, program is running in its own space and you don't need to um, rewrite the program every single time that it's you know, loaded somewhere different in memory. Uh, and what we're going to use is the virtual address terminology is similar from segmentation. This is the address that the application sees. Uh, the space of all virtual addresses is called virtual memory. This is where you program variables. When you print out the address of a variable like your pointers, this is where it comes from. Um, it's typically divided into fixed granularity. Here, like I said, four kilobyte pages. And this granularity, every chunk is addressed by a virtual page number. Uh, the memory is similarly divided into pages, and those are known as physical page numbers. 